Hello everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today I'm talking about Super Mario Brothers Wonder. On the surface this may just seem like another 2D Mario game, but this game is all about subverting your expectation through the means of these wonder flowers. The whole concept of these wonder flowers is they are, there's one in every single level and once you grab it, basically the reality around your character changes and there's some sort of like new trick gimmick theme that's happening in order to progress through the rest of the level. Now you don't necessarily need to grab these wonder flowers, but in order to get all of these resources called wonder seeds, it would be in your best interest to grab them and some levels actually prohibit you from uh, progressing through the levels now that I think about it without grabbing that wonder flower. These are fun because you're never really sure like what each level has in tail and the game just stayed fresh through and through because every level was a different theme, had different enemies, and the wonder flower just mixed things up. Like one makes it so it's like that silhouette where you can only see the outlines of all the characters and obstacles, but then the platforms start moving and they turn and walk in the direction that you're going Sometimes your character turns into an enemy like a Goomba, which uh, provides its own obstacles. Sometimes you get these like giant water bubbles that flow all over the place. Sometimes the, the piranha plants start singing and you're in like a piranha plant parade. It's really fun. For the plot of this game, not that a Mario game necessarily needs an in-depth plot, but uh, Mario and friends were invited by Prince Florian, a little bug looking thing with a plant on his head, to visit the Flower Kingdom. And and of course Bowser comes and ruins the day and makes a mess of things by taking the the wonder flower I, I can't remember exactly what he took some wonder wonder thing and then he actually turns into a giant Bowser castle and is just making a mess of things and, and so we need to visit all seven or eight different lands to collect the big wonder flower thing to defeat him now there are plenty of levels to visit and like I mentioned they each have their own themes and they each have have a wonder seed and three giant purple coins that you can collect. There's also uh, multiple pathways with uh, secret levels that you can visit and then the special world. Uh, yeah, there's a lot to do in this game, but I wouldn't say it's an overall really long game. It doesn't take a long time to beat. It took me less than a week, I think, to get all of the wonder seeds and all of the big purple coins, but definitely worth the time playing through. I do like that you have so many characters to choose from, both if you are a novice gamer and someone who's a little more adept at playing two-dimensional platformers. Uh, you can play Mario, Luigi, uh, Peach, Daisy, a bunch of different Yoshis. You can play as Nabbit, and the Yoshis and Nabbit are more for the uh, beginner gamer, whereas they do not take damage from enemies. You can still take damage from falling and lava and spikes, but um, you cannot run into enemies and take damage that way. You'll just kind of get knocked back a little bit. The drawback from choosing one of these easier characters is they do not get to benefit from power-ups. So that's a no-go for, for me, at least. The power-ups in this game are pretty fun. I wish I had a little more of a variety to choose from, but but the big new one that was introduced into this game is the elephant power-up, which allows you to swing your trunk forward and to store water in your trunk to spray on like lava and uh, wilting flowers, that kind of thing. The elephant didn't really do it for me. I tend to like the power-ups that give me more traversal abilities, uh, specifically like uh, give me flying abilities or hovering abilities at least. And the elephant ability does significantly increase your size as well, so it makes you an easier target. But it's kind of fun in small doses. Really, the other power-ups I found uh, more enjoyable, like the drill power-up, which I don't know if that was in a different Mario game. I uh, you also have the bubble flower, which I do think was in a different game where you can turn enemies into bubbles and it turns them into coins. And then the tried and true fire flower is always gonna be here. But where it's lacking in power-ups, it makes up for in its badges. And yes, this is a two-dimensional platforming game that does offer badges. So if you've ever played uh, like Paper Mario, badges are these things that you can equip to your character that give you different abilities. Now in this game, you can only wear one badge at a time, which I totally understand 
understand, because if we were allowed to wear more than one, it could potentially break the game. Uh, but these badges do varying things. Um, there's one where it makes it so if you uh, wall jump off of a wall, you'll jump straight upwards instead of uh, uh, in the opposite direction. There's one where if you jump right when you land onto the ground, you'll jump a little bit higher. Now this, I'm bummed that they turned this into a badge, because this was already kind of there in previous Mario games through the triple jump, which is lacking in this game, unfortunately. There's one which makes it so your little twirl uh, gives you almost like a second jump, which this is the one that I typically used. It would uh, definitely come in handy a lot of times, especially when I want to reach the top of that flagpole. But yeah, essentially it gives you like a second jump in the air, which was really nice. Some of them are really wacky and I don't see myself using unless it's like a very specific situation. Like one makes it so your character's just always running, but you run super fast and you like hover a little bit when you run off the edge. Another one makes it so you're just always bouncing, almost as if you were like a spring, so you don't ever just stay on the ground. And these are wacky and they're fun in specific ways, but it's not something that I would use in a normal level. Now, uh, a couple levels that are like badge challenges, which give you a chance to like really try out these badges and see what their strengths are. And so in these specific stages, it was fun to use these more wacky and out there badges. Now, I mentioned purple coins a little earlier ago. Every level has three big purple coins, which are worth 10 purple coins, and you can use these purple coins to purchase new badges. Uh, you can also use these purple coins to purchase standees, which I collected all the standees and I never used once. I kind of, I think it's more of like a multiplayer thing, but basically you can like put down a little sign, which is a Mario character doing a certain pose or in a certain costume. I liked collecting all of these, but they're kind of more like the stickers in previous Mario games. I think they do have some functionality in multiplayer though. You do need to sometimes play these levels multiple times in case you miss some purple coins or somehow miss one of the wonder seeds there's also secret pathways that you can go through to unlock new levels in the overworld i didn't need to get all of the big purple coins but it does have like this little checker when you go to the level uh, which levels you have all the wonder seeds for and all the big uh purple coins and which levels you got to the top of the flagpole for. I did 100% complete the game in those aspects. I got all the purple coins and wonder seeds and the top of all the flags and it does give you on the startup screen, it gives you like a little check mark that you, you earned those medals. But other than that, I'm pretty disappointed that it didn't offer any kind of uh, valuable prize for collecting all the wonder seeds or big purple coins. I mean, at least give us some kind of visual badge that maybe makes our character look different or lets us play as a different character, something like that, instead of just the congratulations, you did it. But playing the game and going for all of these uh, resources was the reward in and of itself because this game is really fun to play. I really enjoyed the way that this game controls too. You know, sometimes you play those Mario games and your character just feels kind of floaty or like some of the other 2D Mario games take a while for your character to like ramp up when it's running, but no, this game feels right. It feels exactly how a Mario game should. When I play Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo, that game just controls perfect, exactly how I want Mario to control, and this game is no different. The music and sound design for this game is equally wonderful, especially when you get like specific wonder seeds where the music is part of the, the wonder, I guess, of that level. The, I love the songs, I love the music, I love the way when your character jumps, it actually just sounds like a ukulele Laylee string getting plucked. It's just mwah, perfect. Whenever you like jump on an enemy, it'll say just like words of encouragement as you increasingly uh, do those tasks. It'll say like, good, great, cool, awesome, wonderful. And it'll like, just little words of encouragement that make you feel really cool. In addition to these words that pop up, these levels are scattered with these talking flowers. And uh, the voice of these flowers is just this like very enthusiastic man, um, but they'll usually just like comment on the environment that you're in or a certain task that you do. Um, if you access like a secret area, you'll see a flower and it'll say like, wow, how did you get here? Or sometimes like the the floor below you will break away and the, the the flower will scream as it's falling. So it is just like a fun little interaction. 
it's just a fun little interactive element. I know that uh, the flowers do uh, annoy some people, and I think there's an option to turn it off, but I found them actually pretty charming and entertaining. I also liked the environments in all of these levels. I like that they didn't just go with the typical, this is the mushroom land that's all green, and this is the icy area that's snowy, and this is the desert level. Like, they did kind of do that with the overworld, but I felt like each individual level just had such a unique and interesting layout and theme. As far as difficulty goes, I feel like um, collecting all of the seeds and the purple coins added just the perfect amount of difficulty for me, someone who's uh, pretty used to playing 2D platformers. For a more novice gamer, I feel like this game might be a little difficult, especially if they are going for those things. And I do acknowledge that they have the Yoshis and the Nabbit, so you can't get hurt by enemies, but I feel like it might be a little frustrating, especially later on in the game, if they are trying to play this game on their own. This isn't anything like Yoshi's Wooly World. You do need to be able to uh, c control and handle multiple things at once. But I think if you practice enough and you, you keep working at it, then you should be able to get the hang of it eventually. Overall, I think this is just a really good 2D Mario game, which is, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air because of after the new Super Mario Brothers phase in the DS, 3DS, the, and the Wii, Wii U era, it's nice to just have something that's so fresh and it really revitalizes the 2D Mario platforming era in terms of just new characters and new mechanics and it just feels new and fresh and it's not just the same old boring 2D Mario platforming game. I'm going to give this game a 5 out of 5 and if you are at all interested in 2D Mario games, definitely don't sleep on Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Well guys, that's it for me. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about Super Mario Brothers Wonder, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, I'll talk to you later. Bye!